my biggest uh, motivator is my father. My father is in his mid 80s now. And I grew up to know my father as someone who always stood up for the rights of other persons. He, he had his life endangered. Uh, he became unpopular along the line. But my father was someone, my father is someone who has always stood for the rights of others, who took a lot of pleasure in uh, bringing relief, in bringing comfort, in bringing improvement to uh, the lives of others around him. And my father is not someone that is highly educated. But within his immediate environment, uh, he trained as a health worker and he was able to respond to uh, the, the, an outbreak of smallpox in his time and he helped to save the lives of so many persons. I remember my father being involved in a murder case for several years, an uncle of his who was murdered um, by some other persons right in the village. He was involved in that case for several years. And I don't remember that my father got any reward. I don't remember that my father has been uh, crowned, given a chieftaincy title. I don't remember that anyone has ever come to my father's house with money as a way of compensation. I don't remember that my father has ever been given uh, like a public ovation or anything of the sort. He just finds relief, he just finds fulfillment in helping others. And so I guess that was more like an unconscious thing. So growing up, I decided I must speak for the rights of others. And with my education, with my exposure, I knew that I was going to affect much, many more lives than my father has done in his lifetime. And I also got to know that changing the lives of people, speaking truth to power, improving the lives of the most vulnerable around us does not really cost us the whole world. It doesn't cost much. Speaking truth to power is all about having the courage to speak up, especially when most people uh, do not think that, that they should jettison their personal comfort. And I see that most people who violate the rights of others are cowards. Once you draw attention to their crime, once you stand up to them, they will draw and lives are saved and people are left, especially children, to grow up in a more comfortable uh, way. And also, uh, some of the things we do in some of these communities, besides um, upholding the rights of people, besides rights advocacy, we're involved with young people. And in many of the communities where we work, there is so much poverty. You could literally see poverty working on four legs, on all four, as we would say. And a lot of negligence by, um, by government. And so we've had to uh, have, um, we have had to organize to initiate a number of um, development programs for the young people, skills development. We've had to have massive scholarship programs, especially for the girls, teenage mothers and others. And I've discovered that this thing doesn't really cost the whole world. It's a matter of having the will. And then just like in a twinkle of an eye, you see an entire life change. You see the entire course of a life change. We see a street girl that has been put on our program. And she's doing so well in school. A teenage mother who thought the whole world had crashed on her head. She's just a teenager with a baby. And then with virtually no help. And then we come in and give her some skills and then put her back in school. And this thing doesn't cost much. Uh, in Makoko, uh, the, the uh, fishing community, where we have most of our youth um, development program, especially our girl uh, go for most of the schools in that waterfront community pay school fees on a daily basis. Children go to school, and as they're going to school with their slate or their school bag, they, and then they also go with their school fees. The school fees is just um, 50 naira. I don't know how much 50 naira is. Maybe, I don't know if it's up to a penny or maybe a few pennies. Just a little money. Even by Nigerian standard, 50 naira is just very little money. Before it used to be 20 naira and then 30 naira. Now it's 50 naira. They pay daily school fees. And, I can, uh, and the reality is that some of the children miss schools because their parents cannot afford to give them that money. And this is a community that is right in the center of metropolitan Lagos. It's just incredible. So when you get there, you discover that with 30 naira, you are able to put so many children in school for an entire year. With 300,000 naira, you are able to put like uh, a sub-community, children from a sub-community in, in school for an entire year. 
And so these things don't really cost much, especially because in Lagos, you have some of the richest people. And 300,000 Naira is just the cost of um, a designer perfume, just a bottle of perfume for them. And so by comparison, you, you're using what uh, uh, the resources that have been used to improve the lot of so many persons. You're just using it to spray on your body for just a few months. And so that has really been, that has really opened uh, my eyes to a new reality that if we actually look closely, that uh, we'll be able to transform the world around us. It's a matter of being a little bit of selflessness, a little bit of introspection, a little bit of sacrifice. And those are some of the things that my father triggered in me as a child. Because my father, for instance, used to be a transporter. He had this uh, car. Uh, at a point, he had a bus, and at a point, a pickup car. And he was supposed to use it to ply some areas to pick passengers. But my father would, at the end of the day, not be able to come home with a lot of money because most of the people he would carry would not pay him. This would be his aunt. This would be someone who grew up in the village with him. This would be uh, the child of his childhood friend and all of that. And he didn't make so much money. He just lived his life for people. He's still alive. And I, I think those are some of the graces that have kept him alive. And I think I, I want to age like my father. I think I want to sit back and I see my children taking off from where I stop. I think I want to, to be able to pay forward what some other persons had have established, um, invested in my life over time. I want to pay forward to other persons. I want to inspire as many uh, people as possible, especially those that have um, uh, been paying forward for some of the people, the activists, uh, writers and a number of other persons who have mentored me over the years, beside my father, beside my mother, who is also a major influence in my life. I, I think my work has uh, made me to be more sober and, like I said earlier, to be um, a little more uh, sacrificing for the people uh, around my life uh, because there's so much that we can do with uh, um, some of the resources that we spander uh, in our lives, uh, especially in Lagos, which is um, like a very flamboyant city, a very colorful city. People want to be like the Joneses. People want to uh, just live large. People just want to be cool. It's good to live the good life, but it's also good to look beside us and see the suffering because economically Nigeria doesn't seem to be uh, doing very well. How can we uh, be our neighbor's uh, keeper? How our brothers keep us? How can we help others? How can we be of better use to others apart from pampering ourselves? So my work has influenced me to be more introspective and to be more giving. And I discovered that the more you give, the more you have. You don't run empty by giving out yourself. You keep being renewed. You keep being reinvigorated every single day that you give out. So I really, uh, I'm not sure that I'm where I'm supposed to be right now i want to live a more given life and i want to be of better use to society uh, uh, of course i have been depressed i've been discouraged uh, by so many things but i've never never thought about stopping because i know why i'm doing what i'm doing and i've seen changes i've seen results so i've never thought about stopping but i would say that i've been discouraged along the lines we work in a, in a world where there's a lot of suspicion. We work in a sector where people, some people don't trust us that much. They believe that uh, as an NGO person, you've gotten so much money, which may not be the case. It's just about the interest. It's just about the passion to help the poor, to speak out for the voiceless. And so uh, there are some communities you go to and people feel that you are just helping them Oh, it's just what you're giving out to them is just a drop of what you must have gotten from somewhere, which is just most time a complete lie. Because we have our personal struggles, sometimes financially speaking. And so I've been discouraged along the line and I've asked myself, why am I doing this? I mean, what's it all about? What is this all about? Why am I here? What is it? I mean, why? But at the end of the day, I look at the lives that have been touched. 
I look at people who look up to me. I walk into a, a, uh, a community or I enter a boat because some of the communities are on water, they live on water. I'm in a boat and we are paddling into the community and I see children from both sides of the homes running once they see me and they're going to the arena that we normally meet because they know I'm here and uh, I must have brought some good goodies for them or some good news. And so those images actually keep triggering, triggering the interest. Those images keep keeping the passion afresh. Those images keep encouraging me, keep inspiring me. And so I know that um, I, I just cannot afford to give up. I just cannot afford uh, to stop on the way. I just cannot afford to backslide, so to say. And so uh, I think that most times the encouragement that I get far outweighs the discouragement. So uh, I, I, I've been depressed, I've been discouraged, but I will never give up, give up because I know that uh, I mean something that is really, uh, this is what I was born for. This is what, why, why I'm here on the earth to change lives, to speak out uh, for the voiceless, to amplify the needs, the lives that the society, those in power has, um, have forgotten. I'm here to make a change and I'll keep making a change. Of course, um, our organization is um, called Sea Hope. Uh, the acronyms, when you pronounce it, it means see hope, look at hope, behold, uh, there's hope. And so uh, we see hope uh, and we inspire hope at the same time. But seriously, uh, most importantly, I think that things are improving. Uh, not that we are where we are supposed to be, but that people are much more empowered now to question authority. People are much more empowered now to stand up to authority, people are much more empowered now uh, to ensure that they are visible, that their needs are visible, and that, that to speak truth to power. Um, Nigeria right now is not uh, in the best position, democratically speaking. We have in government, uh, a government that's supposed to be um, a democratic government, but in reality, this is more like a military government. People are being arrested. Um, on the slightest uh, provocation, so to say, people speak through, people write on the social media, the next thing, they're arrested. Uh, we've had several instances of media houses being raided and all of that. So a lot of stifling of opposition voices, a lot of um, oppressive policies. And so we're not right now in, in, in a very good shape, democratically speaking. But then, much more than ever before, I think people are able to detect some of these errors in the system and they are speaking out. And so the very fact that people are empowered, they are speaking out, we know that some of these um, uh, uh, realities, some of these abnormalities in governance will not be forever. And the people will always triumph. So that's a lot. To, so that goes a long way to encourage us. That goes a long way to, uh, to make us hopeful we're not in the best of shape, but then people are not silent. People are speaking out in the social media, on traditional media. The masses are very much activated. They are mobilized. And they know what a good leader looks like, unlike before where people are uh, were indifferent. Now, most people are very, very much attuned to the goings on, on the, in the political arena, and they are ready to vote uh, the candidate that will bring them real changes. They are ready to speak through to power. They are ready uh, to line up to ensure that our democratic values are upheld as a nation. And so uh, I'm very hopeful. I'm very, very hopeful that the future will be much brighter than what we have today. So um, Nigeria is going to be greater than it is now. Nigeria will at least its current um, leaders who are no leaders in the recent because people, people's voices are being amplified. People are taking up their positions in destiny. People are speaking out. People are speaking truth to power. So I think there's a there's a lot of hope, and our hope is not dampened by the realities that we see right now. There's hope for Nigeria. We see hope.